everybody. Um, my name is Chris, and um, four years ago, I did decide to um, put together a new way of talking about a location anywhere in the world. Um, but I guess the first question is, well, why would anyone want to do that? Because it's kind of a curious um, thing. And you're absolutely right, Michael. I, I basically decided to because I got lost, and everyone I knew got lost um, for a long enough time that it kind of annoyed me. So. I used to work in the music business, and I don't know if anyone works in music, but one of the things you spend a lot of time doing is getting lost. And um, I was the guy who was trying to get everyone to arrive for a sound check at uh, four o'clock. And at four o'clock, we always got these phone calls from people going, dude, I've put the address into my GPS, um, and I'm by a hedge and a lamppost, and I see no people. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you, you may be in the wrong place. You should see people and no lamppost. And the more you look at addressing around the world, it's actually not that great. So the UN say that 75% of countries have some kind of issue um, around addresses. And as an example, this is a picture of the busiest, most populated favela in Rio in Brazil. And you've basically got a couple of roads and a bunch of gray space. But that's actually who lives there. And it's pretty different to what you might see on the map. So. There's, there's as many as four billion people in the world who actually live without any kind of address every day. And it's not something many of us can relate to. If someone says, where do you live, and you've got nothing to put on a form or be able to describe, that's a pretty debilitating um, thing. And the Peruvian economist Fernando de Soto says, without an address, you live outside the law. You might as well um, not exist, which is a pretty profound um, statement about what that, what that actually means to you. Now, in the 25% of the world where addresses are meant to work, according to the UN, I would actually suggest that they still are not great, because if, you, uh, if you're the guy in that tent, well, you don't have an address um, for that pretty special place where you want it to go. If you were to design how addresses worked in cities like London, you probably would not name 22 roads Church Road, <laughs> and, uh, and then have this kind of chaos trying to find the right one. And, if you're on holiday in uh, Iceland, like the one poor guy um, who drove five miles in the wrong direction, that's because he couldn't tell the difference between Laugavagor and uh, Laugavagor. And he did go to the wrong one. Um, but you know, this is, I, we kind of feel like, like this shouldn't be necessarily like this, and it would be great if there was something easier. And on one hand, you think, well, couldn't countries with no street names and street numbers just build one? That would just be the logical thing to do. Now, this is the side of a house in Ghana who tried this in the early 2000s, and they tried many different projects to go um, labeling houses, but it actually cost them tens of millions of dollars, like, like many countries, and it takes decades to try and do this. And actually, all of their projects failed. So the person who lives here might have all this stuff on their house, but they've still got no way of describing where they live. And this is not really a quick fix kind of thing. Um, now, there is one way you can describe any location in the world, which is by using latitude and longitude um, GPS coordinates, which are amazing for machines. Um, but the problem is they're not really ideal for people. And certainly no one's ever said to me, hey, Chris, can I meet you for a coffee later at uh, 25 degrees, 9 minutes, 40.918 seconds south, 18 degrees fifth? Um, it, it's kind of unwieldy. I don't know if anyone has done that. I tried using this in music uh, at one of the concerts we did in Italy, and um, the driver called up and was like, I'm here. I was like, I'm not, you're not here. I'm here. And uh, he had actually mixed up a four and a five and had unloaded all of the gear one hour north of Rome, not up one hour south of Rome but on the perfect longitude. Um, so <laughs> it occurred to me that this was kind of good in some ways and not so good in other ways. So what I wanted to do was like, how can we make this really, really easy so that this stuff doesn't happen? Because then maybe we'd have a system people would actually um, use. So what uh, this led us to is, is what three words. And how we thought about it was some old research in terms of how people thought about memorizing stuff. Because the big problem is, if you give somebody 16 digits of GPS coordinates, there's about 0% of people, it's been proven, can actually remember that, which is kind of a problem if that's going to be your system of choice. Um, but when people tested that, they also tested how the human brain can remember alphanumeric characters and how it can remember words. And it was proven that basically everyone can remember three words. So, my idea was, well, why don't we use a system based on three words that actually people can remember? So what we did is we basically laid out this huge grid 
all over the world of three meter by three meter squares. So you've got 57 trillion three meter squares. And we then named each square with three words from the dictionary, like table, chair, spoon, which then corresponds to one of those squares. And this all hinges, the design of this hinges on the fact that you have enough combinations of three words that you can label each of those 57 trillion squares uniquely um, with three words. So you don't have to have a country code nor area code. If you live at gazed across like, that is the only gazed across like in the whole world. And to get around that issue of the truck driver who got confused with the coordinates, we make sure that we put the similar ones like as far away from each other as possible. So you've got table chair lamp in Sydney, table chair lamps in New York, and you would hope that uh, somebody would actually not set off to the, to the wrong one. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed. And uh, we're also, we try and make it easy for people as well. So in the populated places, we have kind of easier words. In less populated areas, we use longer words. And if you use our system in the Antarctic, a three-word address might be like dodecahedron, subconsciously infiltrators. Um, <laughs> we, we don't have masses of users there, to my knowledge. Um, so we can't try and optimize it. And this is not only an English thing. So regardless of your language, we now have 14 different languages that you can do this in. Um, and these languages are available anywhere in the world. So this three meters here has got three English words, three Spanish words, three French words, and so on. So what it means is if you're now the person who lives somewhere like here where um, you had no address before, well, actually, you can now use three words to describe where you live. If you're trying to get someone like I may have been able to to try and get to the exact visitor entrance four of the stadium, well, actually, you've now got three words that you can use um, for there too. So, I guess the easiest way for, to, to interact and understand a bit about um, how the three-word addresses work is just to, um, to download an app called What Three Words and maybe just find your house or you found, find where you work because we've already named everywhere with three words. It's fixed, you can't change it, and your front door's got three words, your back door's got three words, and um, depending on what you think, you might want to shift three meters um, so if maybe you didn't want cabbage or something in, uh, where you, in your address, but um, it's, it's a load easier than using those coordinates. But that's a good way to, to um, understand how it works. But what we're really doing is building an ecosystem. Because one thing, having an app where people can use it, but it's another thing where people can use it in all sorts of other things that they do, not just having to go to a specific app. So now, um, in the last four years, we've got users using the system in now 170 countries in the world and through a huge range of apps and services to just help the way that they do everyday things. And for us, the way we do it is pretty simple. We, we let people use the app to find their three words um, for free, but if businesses want to use this maybe to deliver stuff more quickly or anything else, then that's who we charge. Um, so it's a fairly simple model where I think everyone benefits um, by doing it that way. And so I'll talk you through a few ways that people are doing it today. Um, this is an art gallery in France who were really happy with their three words. They wanted to put it hugely on the window. They actually named the art gallery with their address. So you can find them literally at tables, empty workshops. People are adding us to their contact us pages, probably because people always call them and the address takes them to the wrong place. People are putting Instagram photos up and then adding the three words there because people always say, where did you take that picture of the waterfall? Well, you could just add your three words to an Instagram post. I um, don't know if anyone's ever gone to Japan. This travel guide there found problems. In Japan, they label the streets or number them chronologically. So you can have um, building number four next to 35, next to 82, next to 61, and you will be very confused trying to use the regular address. But now they've just added three words to each listing, which makes life uh, a lot easier. Something really cool, the British Museum decided to add the three words for where they found all of their artifacts, because these were always in really awkward to find places, and they just wanted that to be an easier process for people. Music festivals, 200,000 people in a field at festivals like Glastonbury in the UK. Um, they used this last year for medical care to make sure that they got people to the right place, because if you say there's a problem somewhere near the stage where there's 12,000 people, that's kind of tough um, to find them, and this is how they, they now do it there. We're built into some of the world's biggest navigation apps. Um, this is NavMe, the world's biggest offline navigation app, and you can be in the middle of the desert and NavMe with off with what three words on your phone, no data connection, and it will still tell you the three words where you are, and you can tell it where you want to go. Um, this is not something which needs any kind of data to operate. This is great in India, um, where it's really kind of carnage, and people like live at the fourth 
lamppost on the left by the gas station where the palm tree used to be. Um, and this is how people, like they type this into a taxi app and it's like no results found. Well, um, you can now go onto the Bixi app, put in your three words and it will like, find you and take you to exactly where you want to go to. Um, even the search engines are starting to adopt. This is the first one called DuckDuckGo. You can just put your three words straight in there. So this is the ecosystem that we're building and trying to do um, a lot more like it and get more apps on board. Now, something closer to here in South Africa, last week um, I was in Durban and we're doing a project with an organization called Gateway Health. And one of the big problems for them is um, they take pregnant women to the hospital when they're about to give birth and be, a huge issue is actually finding someone when that call comes in if they haven't got an address um, for where they live. So last week we actually made a, like a sign engraver um, for the three word addresses and took it there. So people came, they found their house uh, on the app and then we actually printed them a sign and they look like this. Um, people wanted to put them on the doors because it was like, um, thank you. <laughs> the, um, the first address they'd had and the first way that they could communicate um, where they live, which was amazing. And um, I've got a short film to show you. If you've got a problem, you're sick, you phone for the ambulance, it's, it's take time to come. Maybe you phone from eight in the morning, then it's gonna come late at six o'clock. But now I think it's gonna be easy for them. Uh, as we work as an EMRS, we, we don't have actually the boundaries. So we work the whole of Devon. It's very difficult because uh, firstly, they don't have uh, road names written and they also don't have uh, house numbers. This new system, it looks like it's going to be very easy for these emergency services to locate wherever the problem is because it's precise. Once a, a, a location, a three meter by three meter location is given a name, then the, the, the authorities can go straight to, the, to, the, to, the, to that place. So it's going to make life very easy for the community around the township. The system of one, three words is going to make our life so easy that we can get to these people in time. It's not going to be only me feel good. All of our public will feel good about it. Thank you, that's really kind of you. Um, and it was amazing being there, um, seeing people literally queuing up to, um, to get their first address, which they'd never had before. It was just kind of an amazing thing to see happening in practice, and it's amazing that it's helping. And, it, and it's one of the projects that we're massively, massively excited about. And I think, so for us, it's great that this is happening and we have all these examples, but what we're really trying to do now is to get scale um, so that we can improve the lives of people in more countries because there's a big old world out there where addresses don't really happen and we are 30 people in London and trying to work out how we do that. Um, so what we're, what we're doing is we're actually now talking to governments um, at a national level to see if we can help them. And one of the ways that we are doing this is through the post networks. I mean, if this is a great example of how it matters, but for UPS, they care because each driver 
um, each mile that their drivers get lost per day costs them $50 million a year. And if we can use companies like this who have this scale um, to get in front of people, um, then this could be a, a way to get more and more people using the system. Um, and the first um, postal delivery company we got is um, the one who deliver mail to that favela I showed you right at the beginning where no one's got an address. They now add three Portuguese words onto every single envelope uh, put through their system, and they can now actually deliver the mail to exactly the right place. And off the back of this example, um, our next call came from the post service of Mongolia. And um, it wasn't the most logical place I thought would come next after Brazil, but um, they invited me out there, and I, I took this picture inside um, what's a fairly standard Mongolian house, um, and this is great, but the problem for the post service is that this is the outside of a Mongolian house. Um, and uh, if you're the person who lives in the house with a red roof, quite what you put on the envelope to get to you um, is a bit of an enigma out there. And for them, this is really, really tough. So um, we, of course, have now the three English words that we um, can let people use to describe where they live. Um, but we now have three Mongolian words as well. Um, we've done a Mongolian version, which was one of the more niche languages to do. But it just proves that you can, uh, you can do this kind of thing for any language that you need to. Um, and on the other hand, this is their capital city, which is just growing and growing by the day, and people just build um, in no formalized structure. And so the post service have an equal problem here to get mail to the right places. So what we're now doing with them, uh, we launched a partnership last summer, um, but we're actually in the process of rolling this out. So as you can see, we have stickers that we give to people, and they, uh, the post service educate uh, people by writing their three words on there for them. They give this to them. These then get added onto an envelope. At the bottom, people put the three words um, address, and then the drivers from the Mongol Post Service can actually um, get this out to people. And with the country actually pushing this, this is really starting to get a scale, and it's something that we're trying to replicate. So the next place, uh, the next country who have adopted our it's kind of the other end of the spectrum. They're very, very small. They're called St. Martin in the Caribbean. And as from now, you can send um, mail with three-word addresses. And we're kind of building momentum doing the same thing. Um, just this year, in the last couple of months, we've now had Tonga, Djibouti, and Ivory Coast. So we're starting to get into Africa as well, who've now said, OK, we will accept the three-word addresses. And they're going to promote it to people in their country so that they can use it and have an address. And this is the way we're going to reach millions of people. There's a delivery company now here in South Africa called Aramex that people may know. And very, very soon, you'll actually be able to order something online. And if you're one of the people who can't explain where you live, you can provide the three words when you're on the checkout page, and then it will come through to you. And we're trying to get this going here in South Africa. Um, so that as, we, as we go to the future, um, there's some really cool things people are doing. We just have a bit of code, and it's really cool to see what they do. There are smartwatch companies where they think, well, why can't we just show people where they are with the three words? So they've added it um, here. This is the block smartwatch. Drone companies are going, well, hey, actually, if we're going to do drone delivery, then your street address is a pretty big space of land. Do you want in your front garden, your back garden? And what's going to be the standard that we actually use for this? Because it can't be a street address. Um, and we've done some experiments here. And it's like, yeah, let's take this package or this medicine, and it could go to um, table, cucumber, um, futurist, but that is a tiny spot and this could be a really big thing for drones um, as they come in. And we now have an autonomous pods cars company who are going, well actually it really is a problem if, if uh, the address takes you to the slightly wrong place. We really want you to be exactly on that spot or in that garage and they're now rolling out with this um, out in Dubai. So there's a whole stack of things um, that we're doing and it's amazing that people are coming to us going, hey, could we, could we do this application? So what we say is that um, we are making the world a less frustrating, more efficient, and safer place by what we do. And I'd really welcome you, if, you've, if you're working on a project which could benefit from having a simple way to talk about location, please talk to us. We'd love to be involved with um, what you're doing. And I hope that um, helps explain how we came up with it, what we're doing, and why we're doing it. Thank you very much.